Live from the studios at the Thomas K. McKeon Center for Creativity, it's time for Tulsa's Creative Conversation, a show that focuses on Tulsa's local arts community. So let's get talking. Hello, welcome to another uh, episode of Creative Conversations. My name is Mark Frank, theater coordinator. And I'm Anina Collier, Dean I'm of the Center for Creativity. And I'm John Brent. Brian Bramblett, sorry, I can't <laughs> talk apparently. John Bramblett, we are so glad you're here. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy to be here. Welcome. Well, thank you very much. So John is an artist. He's a painter from Texas, and he's here um, to kind of talk about his work and his life. Um, so let's start with the paintings you ha we have behind us. Tell us about those. Oh yeah, you know, well, well when it, whenever I hear music, I mm -hmm. see color, mm -hmm. um, and I don't get color from it anywhere else. So I, I listen to a lot of music, as you can yeah. imagine. But <laughs> so I, I have a painting of, of, of Willie Nelson. I just love his face, oh, wow. all the mm -hmm. crags and wrinkles. Yeah. <laughs> and and, uh, and the other one is, is a lady wearing a, ma a mask, but it's a New Orleans bounce painting and. Um, bounce is a type of uh, music in New Orleans where it has all the traditional sort of sounds, but then it also has a little rap and stuff mixed in, but it's all yeah. fun and happy. So you just said Usually. something so interesting <laughs> that I didn't know about you. When you hear music, you see color. And let's just go ahead and put it out there. You're blind. Yes. People see the glasses. They might have deduced this by now. Uh -huh. um, and so you, uh, tell us about that, because that, it's a, what is that called? Um, it's called synesthesia. 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 Yeah, Thank you. Synesthesia. Like I said, I can't talk about it. Yeah. Um, yes, and it, but it's the, most, it's the most common form of mm -hmm. synesthesia. And I thought everybody saw color with, with music. You know, it, it's, you know, I, Certain notes are just different colors. Interesting. And so that's something that's happened your whole life, or did that occur around the time you became blind? You know, it's been there my entire life, mm -hmm. but I, I didn't notice it as much. I mean, I knew it was there, but it was always sort of all the colors around you sort of, you know, um, it, it made that fade a little. Mm -hmm. So I had it, but I didn't really think about it too much. And, Interesting. But Ooh. when the vision went, I thought about it a lot because that's mm -hmm. where I was getting all the color from. And and um, and I've talked to some other, other people that have that that are visually impaired that are mm -hmm. blind. And... Um, and they're musicians, and that's a big reason they got into music because it makes the color so bright that's for them. That's so interesting. Did you lose your vision like early in life, or you know, I was a student in college, uh -huh. and um, um, but but it, I lost it because because of a, a, a epilepsy, and I've had it okay. since I was two. And okay. but if you have epilepsy, you don't have to worry about losing your vision. It's so sure, rare. Right. But I ended up getting Lyme's disease, and the two didn't play very well together, mm. and ended up losing my vision and about forty percent of my hearing. But um, due, due to just the damage, I was having seizures I wasn't coming out of. Mm. But the nice thing, though, is that I was a student in college whenever I lost the eyesight. And if I hadn't been, I, my life would have been completely different. The, the support I got, the help I, I got, the community around me that, you know, that believed in me when I didn't right. believe in myself. Yeah. And you didn't really discover painting or art until the you lost your vision, is that correct? Well, that's for painting. You know, mm. I, I've always drawn. Okay. Um, I was sick a lot as a child. and. Mm. Art was really important to me, but I didn't think I'd be a good painter, so I didn't have the courage to try. I thought, right, thought sure. it wouldn't be very good, so I didn't. I never even tried it. Yeah. And then, but I did drafting and illustration, any kind of drawing. Mm -hmm. So you could do a portrait of a person, or a landscape, or a, a, um, a blueprint for a house. Um, but no painting. And then, until I lost the eyesight, and I needed, I needed something I could touch. Mm -hmm. That's cool. What, what inspires you? So what, what, what inspired you to move on to this field and go farther than? Doing, I mean, doing stuff like this is just amazing. So, well, you know, I, I, I would love to say that I was just, you know, I, was, I was a genius. I was so smart. I thought, oh, yeah, I'm going to sure. do this. And it's going to be amazing. Sure. Yeah. I was really angry and depressed when uh, I lost it, my eyesight. Absolutely. And, yeah. and I was a student. You know, when you're a student, you have these ideas about things you want to do, mm -hmm. hopes and dreams for the future. And um, whenever the eyesight went, all that went away. I so was just what, mourning. So, what did you think you were going to do? What were those hopes and dreams? Oh, my goodness. You know, I wanted to teach. I wanted to be a professor. I wanted to. Um, to teach um, drawing and, well, or something else? Well, really, um, um, uh, art, art was always really big for me. Mm -hmm. It was major, but then. But so was English and lit. lit. I loved to read, I loved to write, mm -hmm. and, and I loved to draw. So, you know, I hadn't decided, but I was doing all of that, and I still do all of that. That's but, great. But it was funny though. Well, kind of funny. But when the uh, I was a I was a lit major, and and um, whenever the eyesight went, I couldn't read or write anymore. Mm -hmm. And so it was really the lack of vision that pushed me into painting. Because hmm. whenever you lose your eyesight, you start learning how to use your senses in different ways, mm -hmm. and you start learning how to use use your sense of touch to do everything. How to how to get around a house, how to get around a city, how to how to put a you know how to sew a button on your shirt, touch, right. or, or or to cook a meal. Everything is touch mm -hmm. and. 
after about a year of me learning how to use the cane and get from my apartment to like school, find, find the campus, and then find the right building on the campus, and then finally be able to write, find the right chair in the right <laughs> building, yeah, and, right. and not get hit by a car or knock over too many people or anything embarrassing <laughs> like that. And I thought, you know, maybe maybe I can get across a piece of paper again, but just leave marks that I can feel, like a, a physical trail. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's kind of where it, that started, but I honestly thought I was crazy. I thought it just didn't make sense. I mean, <laughs> yeah. to start painting. But you were actually painting. Yes, I, I didn't tell anybody. It was a secret because I, I, I thought they were thinking, like, well, John, this is it. You know, they're, it's the last straw. They're going to come after you with a butterfly net or something. <laughs> and, but um, so I didn't tell anybody for a while. And even mm -hmm. the first two shows I did, I didn't tell people I was blind. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have like a show opening. We'd, you know, I would, I just wanted to meet other artists, mm -hmm. other people that were as obsessed with art as I was. And but then it got out, you know. <laughs> and then so the so, I'm sorry. Please. So the journey after college, tell me, take me through that. So because you went from becoming this wonderful painter oh, to you. traveling all over. So how did that all connect together? I, you know, it 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 it, it boggles my mind. It honestly does. And I started painting to reconnect with people. Uh -huh. When the vision um, was was left and, and was gone, and I was worried I was going to lose the rest of my hearing. I didn't know what was going to yeah. happen. Oh my gosh. And I was just trying to connect with people, and I didn't really see a future for me. So the art was just my way of dealing with the depression and the anger. Gotcha. I didn't think anybody would ever want to see a painting of mine. It didn't really matter if they did. I just was doing it so you know I wouldn't lose my mind. <laughs> really, it's in, and it worked great for that. After about six months, eight months, art is a, has a great way of forcing you in the moment. And it forces mm -hmm. you to think about what you can do, and what you can't do doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't come into play when you're when you're trying to create something. And so that made that a habit. And after about six or eight months, I started getting happier. And my early paintings were very simple, very thick, simple lines, very few colors, very muddy, ugly, depressing colors. But the more I paint, the happier the colors get. You know, the brighter they get. Mm -hmm. Well, judging by these, I'd say you're really happy right yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. wonderful. Well, well, think, well you know, it, it, it was strange because after people found out I was visually impaired, I started be working with nonprofits and charities, mm -hmm. and and going and working with people. And it didn't matter if I was if I was flying across the country, the people that I was working with, it felt like uh, they, they were family, and they they all understood what I was going through. I understood what they were going through. I mean, it didn't matter if it was a visual problem, any sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, started working with soldiers. Started working with lots of different, and that and that led to working with museums, mm -hmm. um, designing pro programs to make museums all inclusive for everyone. You That's know, if, wonderful. If if you have a disability, if you don't, if you've never if you've never lived in a crayon in your life, you know, you should still mm -hmm. be able to go in and experience art and have fun. Um, and then since then, it's just it's shock. It's, it's just surprising me. But the artwork's gone to over thirty countries. We've been all over the place mm -hmm. and it's just you know if you had told me that painting would actually help me connect to people I, I wouldn't have believed it 15 well, years yeah, ago. Yeah and I think a lot of people think of painting or visual art as sort of a solitary art form sometimes mm -hmm. but you've made it so collaborative and you've reached so many people oh. and I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit about how you went from kind of trying to hide your blindness mm -hmm. to being totally open about it and you know working with kids and kind of you know changing percep <laughs> people's perceptions about what it can mean to be blind. Oh you know and that that is so true when I first lost my eyesight and I did my first uh, or orientation and mo mobility training that's that's where you learn how to use a cane mm -hmm. um, and f so she steps in the door and she hands me this giant reflective white cane you know that everybody can see it and everybody's gonna know you're blind right away and I, I was just wanting kind of to, to shrink into the background like, mm -hmm. you know not just be the same old me and mm -hmm. You get used to carrying this giant reflective stick around, <laughs> yeah. so, so it's not much of a secret anymore. And then, but it was it was the people that I'd met. There, there was there were some incredibly courageous people that had different disabilities, and the way that they carried themselves and the way that they lived their lives, mm -hmm. it really gave me hope. And then after a while, I stopped seeing myself as a person really with a disability. You know, I was just me. And yeah. I have. A, Ep ep epilepsy and sometimes it makes me stutter a little sometimes yeah, it right, makes me sure. um, so some days I'm more like a James Bond martini more shaking than stir <laughs> but that's okay that's just me that day and, and yeah. I started being able to accept it uh -huh. I think and when I did I, I started feeling better about it and being able to go and work with different groups and be able to paint like be able to do workshops oh my goodness because in the studio you're right you, it is just you there mm -hmm. and but to be able to go and paint with people, we're always laughing and having fun. I've never had a workshop where we're not laughing. We're all, you know, and I learn so much in the workshops. I know I'm there, like I'm kind of putting them on, mm -hmm. but I, I always learn so much. It's just incredible. The, the way I paint now has been influenced by everyone that I've met. And so talk about some of those influences. Like obviously you, it's wonderful that you're learning from people every day, but are there um, other mentors or artists that have inspired you? 
You know, it's interesting. I, I you know, the way that I learned how to use a, a palette knife is just from from feeling other people's artworks, and ah, okay. and, uh, and you can feel where their hands are going. And I, I've, I've been really lucky to be able to feel like some Van Goghs, Monets. Oh, that's and that's amazing. That is not something most people can I say. Know. I know, I know. Yeah. It, you know, it, but it's all, and it, but it's fun in the museums too because a lot of times. The, the tours that I lead and the workshops we do, we can go around and touch some of the artwork. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we can't. <laughs> so yeah. A lot of times I'll say no, but, but with the statues, you know, sometimes you can put on white gloves and everybody mm -hmm. gets a, a chance to feel like a Rodin or something. And, um, but, but I have been able to travel a lot and I've been able to meet some, some incredible people. And whenever I meet somebody that's at the top of their field, I always, I always ask them questions. I try, try to pick their brain. Mm -hmm. and, and, um, um, I, I like this. This year, I was able to sit down with um, um, Je 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 Jeff Bridges. He, he's a musician, oh, yeah. he's an actor, and yeah. he does all this. And uh -huh. able to ask him because I know when I do a painting, I've never done a painting where I'm not like halfway through it, and I think oh, there is no way this is going to work. I mean, I've really gotten mm -hmm. a mess in my this time. You know, this isn't. And I asked him if if he ever felt that way in a project, and he said everything he does. Um, He's, he always feels that way. Yeah, mm -hmm. just Everything. the creative process. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, yeah. oh my goodness. And I asked, about a month before that, I was talking to Don Hahn, he's a producer at Disney. Mm -hmm. He's made like Lion King, Beauty and the Beast, like 30 Disney films, they're all incredible. And I asked him about that, because he's a painter, he just calls himself a painter. Mm -hmm. And he said the exact same thing, that he's never had a project that he, when he was in it, he didn't see how in the world they were gonna make it work. But he said, you just believe in yourself and you, you believe in the weight of the people around you. All of you working together can do, can do it. Mm -hmm. You know, and I was thinking about that because we do workshops and we do workshops with children with special needs. We, we go mm -hmm. all over the place and, and I'm always telling them art is such a great way to be able to do, put a project together. You know, mm -hmm. you, you can come up with your own ideas and actually do them and have faith in yourself. And it's, I don't know, it's reassuring to me to talk to these people that have had success in their careers mm -hmm. and they're saying the exact same thing. They you know, can be just as frustrated or just yes, as it's okay feeling to feel lost. That way. Yeah. And, yeah. It's okay to feel lost. It doesn't yeah. mean you don't know what you're doing. Right. It, is, it doesn't mean you're not going to be able to succeed at it. part of the journey, yeah. Exactly. You just learn to accept it and mm -hmm. keep moving on. That's so true about, you know, questioning yourself because mm -hmm. as a theater artist when I'm directing a play, oh, I'm like, this is never going to come together. Yeah. <laughs> there's a, it seems like there's always oh. that point in a yes. creative project yes. where you think, this is going to be a disaster. That's right. And that's then right. it, oh most goodness. of the time it comes out of there. You know, sometimes yeah. I don't, and that's, that's right. part of the that's process right. too, that's failure. Right. Oh but my goodness. Right. Yeah. I have so much respect for what you do. <laughs> you know, with the painting, you know, you're just putting some something that's sticky on something that's going to hold it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, basically, if you get down, so to, <laughs> you get down to brass tacks. But <laughs> theater production, there's so many people you've got to bring together. I can't yeah. even imagine. That's got to be. I like looking at film. your paintings, and I was saying that, you know, paintings always speak to me about emotion, and mm -hmm. I kind of get the idea Willie Nelson is in reflection of something, and then there's kind of some seductive thing going on with her. I don't know, that's oh. just what I, I, I get out of it, but well, it, thank it, you. there's some really nice emotion coming out of those paintings, so oh. I just, I just they kind of captured me when I sat here, and I was, I was looking at them, the reflection and kind of the seductiveness of her. Mm -hmm. Um, really, really good that you can bring well, that out of a painting then and make make me feel that. Well, thank you. And I think that's really the magic of art. Oh, I, I appreciate that. And isn't that something about art, though? The way it can make you feel, it just brings the emotions out. And, it really does. You know, the worst thing about a painting, I think, is when it isn't when somebody does doesn't like a painting of yours. Like if they hate it, yeah. that's kind of <laughs> nice. It's an emotion. Hey, yeah, you, you got a reaction. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but if they're like, eh. You know, yeah. I'm like, oh, I could take, mm, I don't really care. Yeah. <laughs> That's the worst. <laughs> yeah, I bet that doesn't happen very often. And um, we want to see more about your painting technique, which we will after the break. But before we do that, I was mm -hmm. thinking we could introduce Echo because yeah. I understand that um, she's a bit of a celebrity. She has, yeah. she is. She um, she was put in the Animal Hall of Fame last year. Mm -hmm. um, she got a big medal and, and yeah. everything, and, <laughs> that's but great. it has not gone to her head. She's still the same old she's dog still she always was. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's great. Well, John, thank you so much for visiting, and we'll be right back in a few minutes, and we'll see John's sightless painting technique. Oh, I remember. Come explore TCC's Center for Creativity. This center offers a variety of free public art exhibitions, workshops, and activities. Photography and art is always on display on the walls in the event hall. If you think you can't do something like draw, dance, or act, drop by for the I Can't Workshops. They're held Monday at noon in the event hall. Parking is free and open to the public in any TCC lot. Visit tulsacc.edu slash Center for Creativity or call 918-595-7050 for more information. Hey, welcome back to Creative Conversations. And John, you're going to take me through the process. I'm going to take my take my glasses off and put a blindfold on we're gonna experience what you experience with this whole 
a wonderful thing of art that we call <laughs> art, yes. It's going to be fun, I promise. Okay. okay. <laughs> well, here, well, here let, me, let, me, let me tell you really quick okay. before okay. you do that. Okay. Because I, I, I'm throwing you in the deep end a little you are, bit. Yes. When, when I, before I started painting, I had a year of training of <laughs> being able to touch things and, <laughs> yeah. and understand where I am, you know, how, yeah. to, how to get around, how to cook, how to do everything through touch. Okay. And you've got a minute <laughs> so to, to learn all that's this. That's true. So, yes, that's true. So, so it's going to be interesting. But um, for, for each of us, though, we, we have a, a drawing that has raised lines. So it's just like a, the normal sort of drawing that a person would make. Okay. If you're sighted, you're going to draw with a pencil or a pen, which is great, but you can't feel those marks. All right. So with this, the only difference is that I use paint that you can touch and feel. So you have the flower, and it's nice when you start, if you if you look at the drawing and you, you can feel it, if you, if you look for a spot that looks like, um, that, that you think if you get lost, you'll be able to find that area okay. and re reorient yourself. So Like the circle of the flower, you think? That, that, that'd be a really good spot, yeah, yeah. or the, the bottom where the stem comes okay. down. Okay, okay, gotcha. Yeah. Or, you know, the corners of where the paper are, so, you know, it's just a way of being able to find out where you are. It's the mm -hmm. same thing I do if I'm in a room, mm -hmm. you know, but I know there's the one chair. If I find that chair, then I know where right. I am. Right, right. Or, or, or like on, on this, this is actually a drawing of a buffalo. And so if I'm going down a street, you know, and I hit a street corner, mm -hmm. I know exactly where in the city I, I've got to be because there's only one street corner like right. that or one tree or one fire hydrant. They don't move those things around. Right. So it's the same thing on a drawing. When I hit a certain spot, I know I've got to be at right. Do you do the raised, do you do the raised lines yourself? Yes, yes. And, and for, so some, cool. for some of them, they're very, very thin. And uh -huh. some of them, they're thick. Like, like for me, this is hugely thick. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, it's real big, thick stuff. So, um, but most of the time when I do it, it's a lot thinner. Yeah, but this painting is gonna be all crazy and wacky <laughs> colors and, and, and thick stuff. So I, I you know, I started thick. Now the color, of course, the other thing you use your eyesight for is colors. Okay. And that's actually easy. So with my paints, I have them brailed. I'm okay. a very la lazy brailler though, so it just has barely what I need. So this, it's a medium yellow. So you can just read the label. <coughs> Pardon me, and you can tell what it is. So on there, you have you have something that you can tell what the color is. Right, right. So little, little raised dots. That is brailed. so cool. Sometimes little dots fall off, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. I, I, I can read what's left and, and know what's there. <laughs> so you can read the paints. You know where they are, and they're in the order, you know, of uh, mm -hmm. the, the rainbow. <coughs> also, when you're mixing color, the way that I mix color is through texture. I make the paint, paints feel different. Mm -hmm. So, like, right here, I have black, and it's, like, it's really watery. Yeah, it so really it's is. Just, you know, it's yeah. just watery, watery. Over here, I have white. And it's really thick. It's it's like toothpaste. Mm -hmm. So so the gray would be a kind of a medium then, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so you get in there and, and it's it, it's runny. That is so cool. But you know it, it makes it it makes it a way where you can control the color without having to look at it. And um, so John, is that how you figure out the colors? Because you know one's watery, one's medium, one's thick. Or I mean, you know probably the colors, but I mean, does that help you too? Oh, it does. It really does. And in my studio, I have, I have tons of different mediums, uh -huh. and you can mix the paint so that it. It runs like water. It feels like oil all the way to okay. where it's so tough. You you can you can carve it with a knife. You're right. So you've got oh, you have this huge range of different t textures, different mm -hmm. viscosities. So it just it just makes it where you can tell. And each of these paints have a little bit of a different medium mixed in them. So a little bit. Okay. It's big for me. Sometimes it's not big for other people, but I right. touch stuff all the time. And so 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 that's so that's the way that we're gonna we're gonna get around the paints with this. So you made my yellow thick. So I know that the yellow's thick and mm -hmm. the watery uh, is is the is the green. So that's kind of good to know. That's right. Yeah. 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 So, so the stem can be you know and then the yellow. <coughs> yeah. So just make it a way where you can control the color. Okay. And here's here's the other thing though. Okay. If you're used to painted painting when you're sighted, mm -hmm. you usually paint with one hand. Mm -hmm. If you're if you're blind though, you need to paint with two hands. So you use one hand to see where you are, you know, like, so I can feel on this. Lines, yeah. Yeah, so, like, I'm on the buffalo's eye, and then, and then you use the other hand to, to be able to put the paint down. Yeah, the one hand's kind of to guide you, isn't it? And then uh -huh. kind of know where you're at. Exactly, exactly, and that, that's, that's so it. Yeah. And if you get lost, just slow down. <laughs> and, um, you know, cause it, it, the slower you go, the easier it is. Okay. You want to give it a try? I will give it a try, sir. All right. Okay, so I'm going to put this <coughs> in. Okay. And I gotta get my brush here. Okay. Yep. Now the thing is, is to locate, oh, locate yeah. my paint. And this, and this, and this is the fun part. So I'm gonna make sure I don't peek at all because that's cheating. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I think I got something on my brush here. And if you're not sure, I guess I could touch it, couldn't I? You just, sure can. Yeah, yeah. I'll just have to get my my fingers dirty here. That's okay. 
It's one of the first things that I learned was <laughs> you're definitely going to get, when I first started, I painted with oil paints mm -hmm. and I had a little white dog and she didn't stay white for long. <laughs> she would come over and I'd say, oh, you're so cute, Anne, and I'd pet her and I'd pet her and she would go away green and purple and <laughs> okay, black so, and. All right. So let's see here. So I'm filling with the lines mm -hmm. and then I'm going to try to. Yeah, and just and just fill and just fill with one line and then with your hands I and think then I painted with the wrong color <clears throat> but that's okay it'll be a green flower <laughs> exactly there 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 you go you know what and, the, and if, if the worst happens it'll you just end up with flower. abstract art and that's okay <laughs> you know this is not easy and I respect you so much because <laughs> this is really that you have to concentrate and you have to feel those lines to know where your brush needs to go you know it's um and I don't even See, and I don't even know if my brush is loaded enough, so I've got to go back and um, uh -huh. how do you how do you how do you know when your brush is loaded enough? How do you know you have enough paint on there? That is a good question. You know, when I first started, I only painted with um, t t three different colors, mm -hmm. with a white, a black, and a, and a cad red, and so so it, I didn't have a whole lot to, to have to think about really. You know, with yeah. that, and then you start learning how it feels. Like you can feel when the brush is going along the canvas. And if it, if it has a lot of drag, then you know that the paint's off of it. So. John, I almost have to stick my finger in the paint yeah. and, and kind of fill my brush up with my finger so I know <laughs> I have enough on there. Well, you, you, know, you, you know what I mean? That's just, I guess there's a lot of just touch, isn't there? There is. There is a lot of touch. And it, it's funny. Like, you get used to it. So, like, for uh -huh. me, um, when I first started, it might take me a month to do a painting. And now it usually takes a day or two. So I'm sped up, thankfully. But it's kind of like you know when you first learn how to how to drive a car. Yeah. You're 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 thinking about it so hard. You know, there's so many things that are going on. But after a while, um, driving a car is the is the last thing that you're, you're you're thinking about. You know, you're thinking about where you're going, what you're gonna do, what what, what do you want what you want for dinner. Now, is anybody in is anybody in your studio when you do this by yourself? Are you just by yourself? Yeah, Jesus. Because you've me, done maybe. this for so many years that you know. Well, I, I mean, you have a you have a system. I guess you mm -hmm. have a technique that you know how to fill your brush, how to fill the lines, how to. Oh yeah, and 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 when I first started, really, like the brush that I would use was, was like a size zero. Uh -huh. So I knew that really every brush stroke I would have to refill it. So, so it was just you know it was really it was a numbing. And most of the time when I paint, I paint in layers. Yeah. Because I have to wait for the paint to dry to go back and fill it and to see if I did what I think I did. So so most of the time on most paintings. Um, it may be 10 layers, 20 layers, 30 layers of paint, and it's just thin layer over, over thin layer. Mm -hmm. So I may repaint an area time after time, but it just lets me know, like, I, I can go back in and feel it. The great thing about painting, too, is that if you make a mistake, you just go back and you correct it. Yeah. You know, if you put a paint, if you, like, for, for you, for right now, what, what we're doing, we're just sort of, we're painting, but we're just doing a... Um, a one one layer sort of thing, but it, but if you wait for it to dry, what I would do in the studio, the only difference is is that I would go back after a few hours after it's dried, and I would repaint it again, and then I would do it again, and I would feel it and see like, oh, I don't know if I like this, maybe this other thing would be better. Well, this is a Frank, so this will be worth a lot of money on the market. <laughs> no, there I'm you go. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm just kidding. Dude. I love the optimism. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's, it's, it's exactly, you know, it's, it's the great thing about painting. So sometimes people ask, I'm asked which, which painting I like the best. Yeah. And it's always the one that, 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 I'm, that I'm working on because there's just something about painting. It just puts you in the moment. You know, you're not thinking about anything else. And if, if, you, if you're working through issues, you know, if you, I know as a child I was in hospitals a lot. Yeah. And I had a lot of health problems. And art was a great way to deal with a bad day. You know, mm -hmm. you're 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 not feeling good. You know, just just draw a little. And but if you're having a good day, art's a great way to celebrate a good day. It's, <laughs> so it's very therapeutic. It's peaceful. I feel it's very peaceful. And it takes you know, if you just clear your mind. Mm -hmm. And um, when you were talking about your life, I thought that probably got you through some hard times. You know, with which you said you were very upset about <clears throat> going blind. And yes, you yes. had a lot of. I'm sure you had a lot of issues to try to figure out your life then and go, okay, now what do I do? But then mm -hmm. the art kind of was great therapy, wasn't it? Oh yeah. Oh my goodness. It, 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 it forces you to be in the moment. Yeah. And you know, you're, you're not thinking about anything other than the, what's 
on the end of your paintbrush. And, and you know, in the course of, you know, if, if you've, you're, you're not thinking about anything that you've lost, you're not right. worried about anything coming up in the future, you know, right. you're just thinking about that. And when I first started painting, I was so angry, I was so depressed. But I would paint for 12, 14, 16 hours a day, every day. So I was a student, but I was relearning how to read and write and everything, how to use the, the software we have, how to, for computers to be able to read that way and how to read Braille. So I wasn't really doing homework, I was going right. to classes. So I had a lot of time to paint. And, you know, when you're in the moment that long, you know, when you're forced to be in the moment and you're not thinking about anything that's happened to you, you're not worried about the future, mm -hmm. it just becomes a habit. You know, you start, you start living in the moment like that and, 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 and appreciating it so that whenever I was with my family or we were, we were doing something and I wasn't, you know, I wasn't thinking like, oh man, I wish, you know, I wish I could see this movie that we're at. I was just enjoying being there and, right. you know, and, and the experience of it and the sounds and, and, and just not regretting stuff as much. Do you ever paint anything, John, and then after you're all done, you know, you, you have, I mean, do you know what you, I mean, do you have someone come in and you say, well, what do you think? And, and you say, did you do ask him, did I put the color that I wanted on there? <clears throat> or are you just so sure that you, you've tackled the right color? Do you have someone look at it for you and go, Oh no! This this is this <laughs> color is wrong, and you put blue instead of red. Or that is that is a good question. You know, I I um, you know, at first I, I kept painting a secret because I thought I was crazy, <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't have anybody to tell me that. I would just sort of work on it. But but starting off though, I, I instead of like, I I, I am really throw, throwing you in the deep end here because you're painting a flower, and when I first started, I, I I'm pretending to paint a flower. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah well go ahead. Well you, you know, you're you're doing a great job. Even to give this a try, you're doing yeah. You know, and I um, but whenever I first started though, like I, I went from when I was sighted, I could do a a really intense you know detailed sort of drawing of right. of, of like an exploded engine view of a blueprint for a house. And then with the site going and I was relearning how to draw in a new way, I was trying to draw things like squares and circles and trying to make a square exactly half the size of another square. And, and at the time that was, you know, it was, it was a, it was a great challenge, you know, just trying to do that. But that's the way I started though, was just very simply, just very geometric shapes, um, big, bold colors and very dark colors though at first, but very simply though. So the first, my first painting is like, if you came to my studio, you can see this progression of very ge geometric sort of faces and um, giant color swatches of, and very and, 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 and hardly any de de detail at all. You so know, it took you how long did that take you to kind of balance that out and figure that out and well, get that sharper? So far, it's been about fifteen years, and I'm still working on it. Oh, so it's it's still going. I'm oh doing, my goodness! Yeah. Yes, and you know here in you know, the one of the wonderful things I, I and I, I do a lot of work with children who are visually impaired and. And adults, of course, have, that, that are blind as well. But one of the amazing things, though, is, is what's out there. Like the work that I do with museums, um, we're, we're bringing te technology in there. So this is the first time in history where, if you're visually impaired, you can actually understand what it, what a um, what a photo looks like. Yeah. And that's never happened before. Okay, we're gonna take a break and come back, and we're gonna look at my flower painting and John's painting and see how we did, and remove the blindfold. I remember. Come explore TCC's Center for Creativity. This center offers a variety of free public art exhibitions, workshops, and activities. Photography and art is always on display on the walls in the event hall. If you think you can't do something like draw, dance, or act, drop by for the I Can't Workshops. They're held Monday at noon in the event hall. Parking is free and open to the public in any TCC lot. Visit tulsacc.edu slash Center for Creativity or call 918-595-7050 for more information. Okay, we're back, and I've, I've got the blindfold off, of course, and here's John with me, and he's got a, another painting that he has up that he's been working on, and of course, I've got my flower paint, painting over here, and I, I did pretty good, John. I, I, I got a couple petals done, but I went off out of the lines, and <laughs> but it is, it, I, I, listen, I, I totally respect what you do, and this is, this is an incredible painting over here that you're doing. Well, thank you very much. Oh, my we, gosh. Well, you know, I have a question. So, yeah. with the color, with the, with the blindfold on, were, 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 were you able to tell... Which one was green? Which one was yellow? You know, I could because the like you taught me. Uh -huh. You you said that the watery one was green and the thicker one was yellow, uh -huh. <clears throat> and I thought that really helped me out a lot. 
I think what I had problems is 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 um, proximity of where they were yeah. to, to my hands and the brush. So I could I had to put my actually my fingers in the paint to to load my brush up, which is just way too loaded. <laughs> uh, but but that's that I could I didn't know if I had enough paint on there, and that's mm -hmm. why. I'm really just in amazement how you oh. do that because how do you know, like I asked before, uh -huh. and you, you had a great answer, you, how do you know when you have enough paint loaded up? It's just kind of a... Oh, yeah, you know, and I, and I check it too. Like, I'll brush the oh, paint okay, on my, okay, sometimes yeah, on my yeah, fingers. Yeah. And I'll think, was that right? And then, yeah, of course, yeah. I've just wiped it off, so i got to do it again. I'm yeah. Like, Is it right now? <laughs> but the, when you said that the watery versus the thick, that really mm -hmm. helped me out a lot. Well, that is brilliant. You know, you know, if, if you're able to tell the color without being able to look at it, yeah. that is the main thing. Yeah. And the wonderful thing about art is that you, if you can take one step in it, yeah. so if you can take one step in this technique, then tomorrow you take another step and another step, and it just builds on. And, and that's one of the great things, especially children who are visually impaired. Mm -hmm. we'll, we, we, we teach them this technique. And it's the same techniques I use to get around with Echo or a cane. Mm -hmm. And when children learn it, because their brains are like sponges, uh -huh. their ability to get around explodes. And they're painting, but they're 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 you know they're learning like where one thing is to another. Right. And it's just I don't know. It's, it gets exciting. I get excited from it because art art just has a way of, of being able to open up the world like that. And this is a beautiful painting. Oh my oh. gosh, it says so much too. Well, well, thank you. I, I appreciate that. And. This painting is a little bit further along, but you know how I was saying earlier that I painted in layers? Uh -huh. and, that's, and that's the way that I started with this. When I first started, I had some raised lines going, going here to, to, to let me know where right. I wanted to go. In my studio, though, I have heat guns and I have paint knives so that when I get done with the line, I can heat the oh, line up and okay. push it down. So, so, so some of the lines, I, cool. it, may, you know, it makes it where you, when you do a color yeah, wash yeah, or a glaze, yeah. if you have a big giant line like we did on the, on the, on the ones that we were working on earlier, yeah. Um, a lot of the paint wants to stay on one side if you're doing a wash, but with this, if you heat them up and push them down, you can do more techniques. And now, this so. young man's like uh -huh. hair and face will that be will that be tough for you? Because that's um, so detailed. It, you know that will that take a lot of time? It, you know, it'll take a little bit of time. Yeah. But, but the the technique I use, it's one that the, the masters have used for 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 centuries. Where uh -huh. where if you're going to work on something with detail. It's a lot easier if you if you just break it in a little part. So mm -hmm. so instead of just starting with the detail, I'll, I'll block out the color a little bit. So oh, okay. So I'll put it like you know all brown or all blonde or whatever mm -hmm. color I decide to make his hair, and then I'll right. go in and make some Got parts you. a little darker. That some makes little sense. That just, totally makes sense. Just break it up yeah. a little. Just make it easier. In this right now, I'm just putting in um, some paint. So in my paints, I have them mixed a little bit so they feel a little different. Mm -hmm. And I'm mixing a little of the cad yellow and a little of the the red. But this song, though, it was, to me, it's a song because of the color. But it's a song by, um, by Galactic, so Second and Dryads. So I have the song in my head going while I'm painting, oh. and I have the bass line down there earlier. And then I'm just going in. There's little parts in the song where it has this little. Tss, tss, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm putting in those. So you see, you <laughs> actually see then, John, the painting in your head right now, of, and well, and it's what you're doing. I mean, you kind of see it as you. Yeah, that is well, so so cool well thank you but you know it's like anything like in this when i when i was first starting to paint mm -hmm. um it was a much it was a much simpler con compositions but over the years because i do it every day i'm a little obsessed with art yeah um, you're able to make it a little bit bigger so i'm able to plan out co compositions mm -hmm. that are more so with this one I, you know i i did the basic road and i i drew in the person and then i i started doing the trees and this and then a lot of that's going to be covered up right with the layers that'll go over it but um, but that's okay. I just I just work it out. It's beautiful. I love oh, it. well, thank you. I, I, How many hours do you think you have left on that? You know, I probably have maybe eight, maybe six to eight, maybe. Oh, that's not too bad. Well, you would think, yeah, you but how I'm long? Horrible how, time, so I could be off by a day or two. <laughs> so, so all together, how many hours for this painting? If you had to say, probably all together, maybe two days. Because I wow. probably worked on this maybe four to six hours. But in my studio, though, I work a lot quicker because I'll have a heat gun. Mm -hmm. So I'll put down a, a paint, um, a, a little bit of paint, and I'll dry it really quick, and I'll touch it. And then, um, so it, it just depends. I, well, this whole experience has been amazing, John, and I, I just feel blessed that I was here today for you to teach oh. me this and to meet you. And I think everything happens for a reason. That's how I feel. And so well, uh, you've kind of, you've kind of really uh, ignited a passion for me to go home and paint something. So well, thank you. So I, I appreciate that's, that. So that's really cool.
I have so much respect for you giving that a try. Yeah. I really threw you in the deep end, but you, you, no. were, you, were, you were champ. <laughs> I really appreciate you. Thank you so much. Oh, thank, thank you. I'm going to shake your hand oh, here. I'm sorry. Yeah, thank <laughs> you. That's all right. It's my, I, I thank you so much for coming to oh. C, uh, C4C and, and, and being our artist. Oh, my goodness. It's my pleasure. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We'll be back with another edition of Creative Conversations very soon. Thank you very much. I remember.